So we got a toilet seat. I'll admit, Lowry, I'm gonna be amused if your secret plan is to just throw that at Lafferty. If I was only gonna do that, Paul, I would look for a brick. Well, the thing is, whatever Lowry's plan is, it has to be better than shooting him with a gun or throwing a grenade at him. Otherwise, it's not as good as what those prison guards were doing. It's at least twice as good as that plan, Elvis. Actually, I have no idea if it'll work, but in the worst case scenario, we're doing something. And I don't want to be just hanging around in Candyland waiting for everyone else to hatch ideas. I've still got nothing, personally. I sort of pigeonholed myself by having my secret recipe require six guys scattered around the prison. Your secret recipe had better be worth it, Paul. I guess it all depends on what you're expecting it to do. But before we get to that point, I'm pretty sure we're supposed to be killing some dire rats in the kitchen. Indeed you are. Did you have any other stops or questions before you go to the kitchen? I'm good. Nope. Take us away, Mason. Where do babies come from? Shut up, Lowry. Ask your mom. The answer probably depends on what world and dimension you come from. Barring any real questions, you guys proceed, toilet seat in hand, towards the kitchen. There, peering through the door window, is the familiar bald head of Bald Spalding, the man Crouton has been looking for. He looks concerned. Spalding. Huh? Oh, it's Paul. Also Lowry. And I'm Elvis. Nice to meet you. Look, I I, I changed my mind. I, I don't want to do it anymore. What? You mean leave this place? What would compel you to stay? And if you're evading that responsibility, why find yourself in Lafferty's den? I'm not sure that you're aware, but the taffy you're standing on is an extension of his will. Once he realizes you're here, he'll snatch you away and your running days will be over. Nuh-uh. He holds up a chunk of the tasteless white paste. Just try and grab me, and I'll be gone before you know it. Lafferty already tried a bunch of times, but you can't make me do anything. This garbage reminds me of every corner of this awful place, and there's nowhere I can't go. Hey, Paul. I'm quick enough. I might be able to slap that stuff out of his hand before it gets to his mouth. It's no use, Elvis. If we apprehend him now, he'll just fall into Lafferty's clutches, then be spirited away to King Crouton. Hey, Spaulding. We can't force you to do anything, but, uh, mind telling us why you don't want to leave? Uh, I, I want to leave. But I traveled forward through time just to see what would happen if I cooperated with Crouton. You know, just to look at what'll happen around here afterward. And I saw the pizza, Paul. I saw what you're gonna do. Then your curiosity nearly killed you, Spaulding. If what you say is true, then you're fortunate to be standing before us now. But I don't recall mincing any words about our objective. Our plan was to do away with the Flavor Zone entirely. My specialty will do exactly that. You agreed knowing this at the outset. It's not the same, just knowing how it sounds. Almost nobody gets out, Paul. I'm not like everybody else here. I don't belong in the Flavor Zone. I just want to travel the multiverse and, and enjoy good food. I don't want to kill people. Hey, hey, Spalding, come on. I didn't exactly get into this line of work to kill people either, you know? I just really love beans. I thought other people would love beans too. I, you know, I thought the best way to die would probably be to drown in beans. And, and I would drown myself, but then I wouldn't be around. And See, I got a responsibility to drown other people in beans as an act of kindness. It all makes sense when you think of our side of things, man. Okay, no. See, that is that is exactly the kind of logic that I am not connecting with. I don't want to kill people with food. I don't see that as a kindness. I, yeah, you like, couldn't you have just given them the feeling of drowning in beans through taste? You know, instead of like actually killing them? Well, then it's just not authentic. Yes, no substitutions. It is really weird to hear you standing up on a moral horse right now while compromising on your morals, Spalding. Jeez. I, how is this compromising on my morals to not want to kill people who like my food? Can you imagine the disappointment of ordering a death by beans, only to discover it's not really a death by beans, just a pathetic, playful facade of death by beans? Death by beans is a famous dish where I'm from. You can't alter the ingredients. It's like trying to do chemistry by swapping chlorine and fluorine. Not only messes everything up, but it's reckless and dangerous. You gotta stick to how things are. I thought you, of all people, would have had standards when it came to food, Spalding. <laughs> well, I... I mean, in some way, shouldn't we be... I, I don't know. I can't talk to you people. Crouton wouldn't have taken no for an answer either. But maybe some of you guys belong here. Maybe you need the flavor zone. I'm gonna leave, but I'm not gonna take any of you with me. Oh, come on, man. Don't be like Hold that. Hold a moment, Lowry. Well, go on, Spalding. If you intend to leave without us, then do so. Why are you still here? Well, because... Cause... Because you lack the ingredients for your escape. Because there is no substitute for precisely what you want. And what if, Spalding, one of the ingredients you needed was a human heart? Faced with this conundrum, would you choose to stay among the likes of us? Look, I don't know. 
But what you're gonna do, Paul, that's a choice. You could leave without making that pizza. Look around you, Spalding. If I fail, others will succeed regardless. If we are men terrible enough to deserve the flavor zone, then my Gaia pizza will be the execution equally deserved by the people here. In fact, it may be a mercy. Imagine spending years toiling away in Lafferty's Taffy Kingdom, being forced to place on a smile, selling exotic children's toys dressed as weapons to anyone foolish enough to stumble by. Is this life under tyrannical rule of other madmen? Is it really all the more merciful than putting a righteous end to it? Spalding, if I have to hang around this place for more than a few hours, I would rather just drown myself in beans. But weren't you just saying that you would really like to drown in beans and that is a, like a life goal? Yeah, you know, like that's an appealing alternative to whatever's going on that's always on the table for me. What Lowry is trying to say is that he would finally give up on everything if it meant not serving some of the more powerful inmates of the Flavor Zone. The manner in which he seeks rest is irrelevant compared to the permanent abdication of his divine purpose. Well, that's you. But some of the others here are choosing to live. And they're at least living under Lafferty. You delude yourself. Look, it doesn't matter if he helps us or not. If he can't get us out of the flavor zone, then the objective changes. We take the place over and we make it our own. That's just as good. With the run of the place and enough sparks of genius, we're going to find our own way out. And when we do, we're going to find your home dimension, Spalding. And then you'll have plenty of food to try across your whole universe. Elva, let's not resort to the barbarism of threats. The fact is, however, at some point, Spalding, a natural order will emerge, and the denizens of the Flavor Zone will turn their efforts towards escape. Regardless of who controls the helm, there will doubtlessly be some who regard yours as the grandest betrayal, and they will come seeking. To cooperate with me eliminates all doubt. What will come will come. I haven't the faintest idea how your time-traveling abilities work, but I'm sure that if you use them to see the outcome, where you circumvent my will, there is not necessarily a better result in the grand scheme. You don't know that? Maybe Inferno regains control and puts you guys back in your place. And then captures you as well, as a jailbreaker, yes. But on the other hand, we're standing in a literal field of taffy. This alone is enough to produce a variety of powerful recipes, even with the bland supplies we're normally given. Your only safe path to escape is to put an end to Inferno himself, and then cover your tracks. You... You... He shovels some food into his mouth and then blinks away. Think about it. I hope he comes back. I'd rather escape sooner than later. What do you suppose he was doing here? Either collecting taffy or looking for something in the kitchen. Even with time travel at his fingertips, collecting ingredients in the flavor zone is a risky endeavor. Acknowledging that, I believe we have some kitchen rats to take care of. You open the door, and inside are several rats about the length of your forearm crawling around. They're all made of taffy and acting like ordinary living creatures. Well, that answers our question of whether Lafferty can make taffy life. This is going to be such a chore. And it's irrelevant. Lafferty is intentionally wasting our time in service of Crouton. One of the rats spots you. It makes a squealing sound, and they all stop what they're doing. They begin leaping onto one another, fusing into a monstrous rat centipede. It sprouts wings and then shrieks at you. Close the door. Right, let's say we use one of the grenades. Pass Paul the grenade, crack open the door and toss it in. Pow! The grenade goes off. When the mustard clears, the taffy in the room looks all drippy and has lost its structural cohesion. The center rat now looks like a melting snowman, folded over. The top half of it falls to the floor with a splat. How much experience do you think we got for that? It's clearly just a matter of the clock ticking. We can't play these games. We must find a way to Lafferty and free my line chefs. You suppose they got any loot in them? Like, I don't know, Taffy dollars or something? I do have to wonder. My entire life's work has revolved around the ingredients in a human body. But if you can make Taffy life, what makes it healthy? And do you think it's more healthy than an ordinary human? Something for a future hypothesis. For now, let's return with news of our triumph and see if we can't leverage the so-called village elder into doing our bidding. You head back to the cafeteria square and knock on the elder's taffy door. He answers. Oh, it's you again. Great. Your next quest is to kill some wild boars and bring me back five boar tusks. You don't require proof that we killed the rats. Well, did you not kill the rats? About that. It seems you're tasking us with busy work and the promise that we'll eventually advance to our goals. But in practical terms, it seems your motive is to do away with the various problems in the land. Is it not? Sure. 
Yeah, I guess. You could say that's my motive, yeah. Well, then it stands to reason, whatever wild rats or hobgoblins you can find for us to torment, it would be your greater interest to strike at the source and put this all to rest at once, wouldn't it? Oh, uh, I mean, uh, I don't uh, know. Uh, don't break character. Lafferty is always watching. Your motive is to end the suffering of your people, is it not? My motive is to give you this list of errands to do. Oh, really? And why? Because the good knight Lafferty demands order in his kingdom. You gotta kill these boars because they're, like, I don't know, riding skateboards on our sidewalks or something, and there's an ordinance. Ah, shoot, I kind of want to see these boars now. But are they not, noble elder, all simply the taffy creations of your good knight Lafferty? And by that logic, would he not be able to provide the greatest clarity as to why these threats are plaguing your people and what should be done about them? Yeah, he made the list. That's what he's doing about it. Well, I'm suggesting that you forego the list and let us talk to Lafferty directly. I can't until you complete the list. Now, go fight these radical skateboarding pigs or I'm not going to tell you the next thing on the list. Or, I put my hand on his shoulder, what if it seemed that the one standing between us and the benefit of the realm were the village elder? Would it not then be the obligation of a magnanimous adventurer to do away with this corrupted elder? I crack my knuckles. I also look like a frail old lady right now. And, if we were mistaken, is the list not simply available to us? We owe it to your townsfolk to solve these issues as directly as possible, to the furthest extent of our abilities. If we believe you are corrupt, then we must strike at the root. I gently chop at his neck with my hands. Unless, of course, you might concede that the roots are found ironically above us, in Lafferty's castle. So what? The deal is either you kill me or Lafferty kills me? Actually, I believe not. Lafferty seems rather proud of what he's put together here, and as long as there is no conflict with your motive, I don't suspect you're placing yourself in any danger by cooperating with us. The curtains remain closed, as it were, and there is no criminal hint of the man pulling the strings. Retribution can't be laid on a village elder for acting as any logical soul would do in his position. Right. Fine. It's not like I like getting pushed around anyway. If it's not him, it's you, and I hope you all kill each other. He fishes a small taffy whistle out of his taffy tunic pocket, steps outside, then blows into it. There's a moment of silence, then you hear gongs striking from up above. Bong, bong, bong. The castle gates above you open, and a large set of taffy stairs begin to unfold one step at a time rapidly down towards you. The steps slow down just before coming to completion a few inches from your feet. There's candy torches on either side of the stairs, and they sprout red taffy that looks sort of convincingly like fire. Well, we're walking out of the pan and into the fire on this one. Are you sure we ought to just waltz up there and hope it shakes out for us? In my dimension, a brilliant general named Jerry Seinfeld used to say a defeated general goes to war and expects to win. I'm thinking Seinfeld knew what he was talking about. Really? In my dimension, Jerry Seinfeld is a famous therapist who heals people by shouting at them. He's especially mean to fat people. Well, in mine, he married the Prince of England then died in a fatal car accident. But your words of caution are not hollow, Elvis. Lowry's the one with the plan. What do you say, Lowry? Is this our best course of action? We're walking into the taffy den, and clearly he's got all the cards in the deck stacked against us, and we don't even know what game he's playing. But that's why I brought my own game, with its own obscure rules that I bet Lafferty has never even heard of. He's going to be playing Pinochle, and I'm going to be playing Duel Monsters. Okay. But that's not really winning, that's playing two separate games independently of each other. Well, I'm also going to flip the table over and call him stupid. I don't know, I, I had 30 seconds to think up the metaphor. The point is, we don't know what Lafferty has in store for us, but there's no way he can anticipate what I'm about to do. So we're as good as we're going to get. Larry, you are vaguely undermining my confidence in you, but I have enough confidence in myself to make up for the both of us, so I'm certain that we'll be fine. Let us confront Lafferty. You guys march up the taffy stairs. They're not exactly up to code. It doesn't seem that Lafferty has exact precision with his powers, so the stairs are kind of uneven, and you're making sort of long movements to get up them. But that might also be necessary, because the castle is situated at such a high-up position. When you finally arrive at the main doors, they swing open, revealing a courtroom. The inside is lined with more taffy torches, and the actual lighting is provided by ambient sunlight. It causes the place to look a bit dim and eerie, with a number of shadowed corners. There's large suits of armor on the walls, armed with colorful, shiny weapons. The main throne is turned around, facing the wrong direction, away from you. There's a stained glass window above the throne, showing Lafferty being carried by an angel. The angel looks like King Crouton. Good heavens. Lafferty, if you dramatically turn around in that throne and you say something cool, 
The cliched nature of the moment is just going to undercut everything. No one's going to take you seriously. The throne swivels around, and there's no one in it. Then, Lafferty emerges from the stained glass window, being carried by a taffy version of King Crouton as an angel. It looks like he's being held up by strands of taffy, so he's not actually flying. The angel lowers Tafferty down onto the throne, then flies back up into the window, which no longer shows Lafferty in it. All my dear adventurers, this is my kingdom. And in my kingdom, I can make whatever entrance suits my imagination. And for your information, I could also enforce any kind of exit my little mind could come up with. That said, Paul, you must think you're pretty clever. Well, a past history such as mine could lead one to develop an ego. Well, you should be careful with that ego. You didn't even see my bugbears. There were going to be giant, ferocious honey bears with bear heads. Well, one thing I haven't seen, Lafferty, is my line chefs. You expect me to carry on in this charade on your word alone? You've only barely presented the most meager of incentives. Don't you trust me? I've been totally honest up until this point. Ah, uh, fine. Whatever, here they are. He waves his hand and your two line chefs descend from the ceiling, wrapped tight in a cocoon of taffy. Mushroom. Olive. Olive. I uh, see, Paul. Now there's a good nickname for a female line chef. Well, th that name is already taken. Gentlemen, stay patient. We're going to work this out. Oh, we absolutely are not. You cheated to get up here, Paul. I made it clear you had to complete my challenges, but you jumped the gun and you decided to fight the big boss early. That's absurd. You presented me with a scenario wherein I am to help your townspeople and in exchange receive an audience with you. It's clear that you create these woes that plague them, so it stands to reason that cutting to the heart of the matter is the only pragmatic no, choice. No, you're using out-of-character information. You are supposed to assume that the taffy animals were just naturally living, breathing parts of this ecosystem. But look at you. You didn't even try to play along. You, you stole a toilet seat from the latrines and now you're just walking around with it. What sort of sane person would do that? Well, I do got a reason. The reason is you're nothing but murder hobos. Now that is not true. We got prison cells we stay in, and before that I slept in my restaurant, and before that I lived in a multi-generational apartment with my brothers and sisters. Lafferty, I do come from somewhere. It's not anywhere too amazing, and nowhere too proud, but it is a resourceful place. See, Lafferty, I didn't grow up having a lot. When I was a kid, I don't know about you, but I didn't live in a castle. I went hungry a lot of nights, and I think that's why I got so interested in food. I can appreciate all this taffy and everything. Because it's food that stretches. Yeah, my family, we'd make every kind of food stretch out as long as we could. That one leftover slice of pizza, you gotta make that last all week, right? That one egg goes into everything you make for days. I got really interested in that. How long can you make a little bit of food last if you really push it to the limit? I hold up a single bean prepared in my signature sauce. How long can you stretch a meal composed of just a single bean? I'll tell you. Lafferty. It's bottomless. I close my fist around that one bean, and when I open them again, beans erupt from my fingertips and into Lafferty. Ah! A surprising fire hose torrent of beans tears loose from Lowry, shoving a startled Lafferty through his taffy chair and into the soft taffy brick wall behind him. When the torrent of beans subsides, Lafferty is on his knees. The taffy construction directly where the beans have landed are sagging as they give way to what appears to be self-proliferating legumes. My word. You've had your endless bean dish up your sleeve this entire time. It's only ever been the one bean. Over and over again. My only bottomless bean. Lafferty gets to his feet. Enough! You think some barbecue beans are enough to overcome my entire kingdom? All right, guys, so you know how I said your roles in my plan were simple? Paul, your job is to not get killed. It's genius. Elva, I need you to beef up and punch this guy as hard as you can. Crack a molar. I guess with the one-step plan, there's only one way it can go wrong. A mission statement to punch me is not a plan. There's plenty of ways that this can go wrong. The Taffy Knights all lurch to life. Ignore them. Run past them and sock Lafferty right in the face at top speed. Oh, then I'll just deal with these Taffy Knights by myself, shall I? You rush up and clobber Lafferty in the face, causing his rubbery Taffy head to bounce off the wall behind him. He reverberates and clasps his ears to stop his noggin from shaking like jello. Elvis, you're going to take half that damage to your hand as well. Oh, oh that's smart. Man, are you still awake, Lafferty? You're tougher than you look. Madam, how can you be sure you're even punching the real Lafferty? Lowry, you're up. Hop on the toilet seat, surf on it on a wave of beans so I've got a high vantage over everyone, then bury Lafferty. Up you go, riding a toilet seat on a wave of beans. And then down they come, flying over Elvis's head and on top of your enemy. He's completely buried. Paul! 
I guess I try to create as much distance between myself and these taffy knights as I can, then try to dodge their attacks. The knights march forward, clank, 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 surrounding Paul. Two of the nearest ones approach you from either side. The first knight swings high and you duck underneath it, but the second swings low and gets you. Luckily, instead of being a chopping implement, the taffy just explodes into you, surrounding your body and trapping you. Ugh. Oh, well, I guess I'll count my blessings. Elvis, you're up again. Wait for Lafferty to try to pop out of these beans, and when he does, give his bell another ring. All right, you're waiting for a target. Lowry. Sweep back and hit those knights that are bothering Paul. You fled the area around Paul with beans. These knights are like twice the size of a man, so you only get up to their thighs, but all the same, it doesn't seem like the taffy is doing well with being turned into beans. The nearest knights sloppily fall over into the beans. Paul, the taffy holding you softens. But that's when the ceiling opens up and Lafferty drops down right on top of Lowry. He grabs you as he falls, and then he wraps around you in kind of a loopy stranglehold. What? What are you doing over there? Come down here and take your medicine, Lafferty! Paul! Fight my way out of the taffy, and then try to stay safely in the beans. Elvis! Lowry, bring him on down here! Granny's looking forward to a visit! Lowry! Come on down to Elvis's level. Elvis, Lowry drops down to punching range, and you lob a devastating left hook into Lafferty, detaching him from Lowry, but also knocking Lowry to the floor. You felt the satisfying crack on the ribs on that one. Oh! 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 oh Elva! You have a dangerously mean hook for an old woman! I'm a businesswoman, Lafferty, and you need a good hook to sell your business! All right, but how's this for a hook? I've still got Paul's line, Jeffs! And look up there! I've added one more to the collection! You guys looking up on the ceiling, you see Pepperoni is now also tied up with the others. Oh, for goodness sake, I lost track of him in the moment. Well, you're about to lose track of them for good! Stand down, or I'll be forced to strangle the life out of them! Lafferty, you do that and Crouton will never be able to use me, even if he chooses to. Unlucky for you! Crouton has already been talking about taking over the Flavor Zone! <laughs> Mr. Paul? I'm not sure that Caesar even really cares about your silly pizza. Now, I'm doing my best to leave his options on the table, but my great king is gonna understand if I had to take necessary remedial steps. Kill them and I'll dissolve you alive and screaming in a bucket of cleaning ammonia. Do as I say, and I won't kill them. That was always the deal, Paul. We could have fun playing a lovely game together. I don't even dislike you. I think you're charming. We'll just put all this behind us. Alva. You think you can jump up there and catch those guys if I knock them loose? I can promise to try. All right, get ready. Mason, I launch a bean beam at the taffy holding Paul's lion chefs. The beans collide with the taffy, eroding it. The lion chefs break loose and begin to fall. Try to leap up there so I grab them on the way down, then try to parkour off the wall to slow our fall. Sure, give me acrobatics on that. Elderly woman, master of a healthy body. Okay. Elva, you leap in the air and sweep up under the lion chefs, kick off the wall as you reach it, then tumble to the ground. It's rough for everybody, and you all roll away from one another in the fall, but you don't think anyone broke their necks. Run up and kick Lafferty. He recoils as you kick him in the face, but then bounces back and wraps himself in a spiral around your leg. Paul, you fall down as Lafferty slithers up your torso. Oh, you are disgusting. Mason, I run up and try to clamp my hand down over Lafferty's nose. He struggles with you and tries to throw you off, but you get your hand firmly over his face. When he opens up his mouth to breathe, launch a fire hose of beans right down his throat. Well, he thrashes and he fights, and finally he gasps. <gasps> and that's when thousands of high-pressure beans get launched into the man's open orifice. Because he's made a soft candy in a lot of places, it's actually rather gruesome. His body expands and then bursts with beans in the weakest spots. But because you're launching this stuff down his windpipe, he can't even scream. A terrible fate for an insane candy man. The taffy torches stop flickering, and slowly, the taffy knights come to a stop and begin folding over under their own weight. There's silence for a few seconds, and then you feel the castle itself begin to droop with all of you still inside it. <laughs>